Well, Sally, thank you so much for being here with me on the Entrepreneurial Success Podcast. I mean, oh my goodness, how did we just have a laugh right now? <laughs> Just before getting started. <laughs> I love this. I love the, talking about all of these ideas, connecting with other entrepreneurial women who are doing this incredibly important, difficult work, and we can't do it alone. So I'm, I'm here. I'm up for it. I'm excited. Yes, indeed. So why don't we get started by you introducing yourself to the audience. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. Sure. Well, hello, my name is Sally Z and I am a speaker and a speaker coach. I really spent the last 20 plus years empowering big hearted entrepreneurs, coaches, change makers, leaders who have a message that they want to bring out into the world. They might not consider themselves a speaker, but my job is to help push them out front so that they can have a bigger impact on their audience and grow their revenue and all of the wonderful things that can happen when we actually do that and embrace our role as the speaker and the voice and the storyteller of our business. Oh, and I know as soon as she said that, I'm sure a couple of her people in the audience were like, now this, this is a scary thought for me. <laughs> totally. so we will talk about that in a little sense as well, but I'm very intrigued with your story. How did you become a speaker coach? What was the story behind it? How did that kind of lead you to go to that making, to making that decision of like, this is it, this is the thing that I absolutely love doing. Yeah, well, I have always really enjoyed being on stage, being out front. I was in theater and I did high school speech and all of the things, which makes me very different from a lot of my speakers and the people that I coach who are not necessarily clamoring for the spotlight. I have always really loved it. And so I found myself as a young professional working at an organization where I was out speaking to 150 plus teenagers every day. And as you might imagine, teenagers have a really critical eye and they are not going to stand for inauthentic baloney. They're like, can sniff out somebody who is trying to pull one over on them. And we were talking about these really big ideas like kindness and courage and respect, these universal concepts that are really important for them to understand and take in, but they don't necessarily want to talk about those things. It's sort of like mom can go, wah, 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 respect, wah, 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 <laughs> like not hearing it. And I remember being in this, um, on this retreat, that's what we used to call them when we were out working with kids, we'd be on these retreats and we would do two 20 minute talks, kind of like a TEDx talk throughout the day. And I, I was just in love with this whole program. I, I it felt like such an amazing use of my skills. Plus I was working with kids. It felt like I was doing good for the world. It just was an amazing opportunity. And I honed my skills so, so much. And I, uh, as a speaker, I remember standing in front of 150 kids one day and noticing the kid in the back who was like talking to his friend and not really paying attention and the person in the front daydreaming and not really honed in and discovering the tools that worked, that engaged and pulled people in as a speaker was so gratifying empowering. And I recognized that those are not just great skills to have. They can transform your audience's understanding. They can help them see differently. They can, can change the trajectory of their life in very dramatic fashion. Obviously that doesn't happen all the time, but it did and it can. So as a speaker, it was this incredible training ground for me. And what was amazing for me as a coach is that right alongside my growth as a speaker, I started coaching almost immediately. My boss, who was this incredible speaker, he'd been doing it for 20 years. He's got books. He's kind of do, does the whole thing. He came up to me one day and said, Sally, I'd love for you to give me some feedback. I know you've done a little coaching on the side, but would you give me some feedback? I was like, I'm 25. Like, what am I doing? Giving you feedback? Really? Is this a thing? It's my boss. But I thought, okay, 
So he handed me his script. I jotted some notes as he did his thing. And afterwards, I was so nervous handing him that script back to him, but he looked at it and he was like, oh, this is great. This is great. And really within a few months, he had me coaching everybody else on staff right alongside of the speaking. And so I grew up professionally doing both. And I love both. I love speaking. I really love coaching. I love to help people step into what they don't think is possible mm -hmm. right away. And so that got me started. That sort of sent me down the pathway that I'm on. And within a few years, I was freelancing and eventually it became a coaching practice. And I have adapted that coaching practice to now offering programs, courses uh, online so that I can work with more people and people from all over the world. So here I am now. I live in St. Paul, Minnesota, boring St. Paul. We were just talking about sweet St. Paul. I have three kids and I'm married to my college sweetheart and life sounds all really grand, but it's also just very, very normal. <laughs> you know, it's very normal all at the same time. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love it. And I think, you know, what really stands out from your story is it's the one thing that you just fell in love with the one thing that you just naturally did. Mm -hmm. And that was just the thing that you felt, this is what I've got to do. And it just naturally progressed from there. And I mm -hmm. think this is what's so beautiful because once you really discover what it is that you really enjoy doing, opportunities just start coming your way, doors are opening up and you're just going on this amazing journey. And I know as I'm saying it for some of the people in the audience, it's like, well, it's easy for you to say. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can do speaking. You found out from a young age what it is that you were in love with. I still don't even know what I'm doing. But yeah. the thing is, is I think, you know, even at a young age, we're very much more open minded at that point in order to kind of really discover things. The older we get, we get a little bit more close minded. We feel a little bit more insecure. And this mm -hmm. is, I think, where speaking comes in play as well. That insecurity of what it brings, we feel that, oh, I can't do that. You know, I didn't oh. start doing this from the age of 25. There's no way I can do this at the age of 40, 50. Right. And so many people just encapsulate themselves and just stay in this little safe comfort zone without really trying things that could actually be really aspirational for them. You are describing everyone I've ever worked with, even people who have all the accolades, all of the titles. They have no business doubting themselves and that they could have that kind of impact, that they could step out front and be seen as that leader, that they belong in that moment. They are worthy. Their stories deserve to be told and heard. Everyone I've ever worked with feels sort of like an awkward teenager when we are in the process of helping them step out front, it's kind of part of it. And I think maybe because I discovered it when I was an awkward teenager, I just figured this is how it is because I'm <laughs> awkward and this is awkward and this is, this is how it goes. And there's no avoiding it. Unfortunately, like to get from discomfort, which is how it feels at first for everybody, is it like this out of body experience to, to move from discomfort to a place where you really, even if you're still nervous, because everybody still gets nervous. That's like a big lie that everybody thinks, right? Everyone still gets nervous. So, to, but to get to a place where you're more comfortable with that experience, where you know how to manage it and you trust yourself in that moment, that just takes going through. You yeah. can't avoid it. Um, which is why a lot of people do the just opt out, opt out. But if you want that bigger impact, then we, we've got to go through. Yeah, absolutely. So this is where I want to talk about speaking a little bit. And I think, you know, one of the major things here, which we just got to get clarity on again and understand why speaking is so important, but why is it that we need to step up and get visible, especially as business owners from your point of view? Why is it that we need to start stepping up really and start getting more visible? Well, we've all heard the idea that, that people buy from people. And when someone sees your face and hears your voice, it fast tracks connection, trust, authority. You're not just an expert that knows things. 
Like when we write, it's an experty knowing kind of thing. But you showing your face, you using your body, when the words live in the body and you get to express them and you shift into that place, well, then I have a sense of who you are. Mm -hmm. And that gets me to a place where I can determine much more quickly, is this somebody I want to walk with more? Is this somebody I want to invite into my experience? Or is this someone who's not for me? And they figure that out faster. And that is a good thing. That is an absolutely good thing. The trick is then when we're showing up, we show up fully authentically as ourselves. And that's not an easy thing to do always. We're always on the journey of just trying to show up without all the layers of false in front of us, right? If we can just show up real. But when we do that, it is such a powerful tool in your business. Now, aside from that, as entrepreneurs and why I love working with entrepreneurs, there's something deeper at play in, ter in terms of why you need to step out front. Because mm -hmm. it's not just, this is a great sales tool. It's not just, this is going to be better for your growth, blah, blah, blah. It's because your business is you. Yeah. And so taking the risk of stepping out front it puts you out there. You are the business and there's something metaphorically, cosmically, I don't want to get too like woo woo about it, but if you can take the risk to step out front, it's like signals to the universe. Like, okay, I'm ready for big things. I am taking the risks required to get out there and do that. Does that make any sense? Oh, 100%. And it's, it's like you and I talk the exact same language because that's what I say to my clients is you're unique, like your DNA is, you know, and even if there's other coaches doing or other people doing exactly the same thing as you're doing, they're going to be yeah. different because they think differently. They talk differently. They laugh, they respond differently. Yeah. And that makes their business unique. You know what, who you are as an individual, you take that and you implement it in your business. Yeah. And I think when people start seeing it in that sense, they're going to like, Oh, okay. Who pressure off a little bit. Maybe yeah. I should just show up for who I am. Yeah. And yeah. that visibility that you build around who you are is what's actually helping your business succeed. Totally. And we avoid it at all. I mean, I, I avoid it and I like it. it. It's vulnerable. It can feel risky. This, these, this is all true. It's all true. And yet when we take the risk and when we step out front and own our place out front as the, the voice and the story and the, the body, the human behind the business, something happens. It's a confidence builder because you prove to yourself that you can. Yeah. So the other question I have for you is, is from your experience, and I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask this anyway. Okay. What do you feel is the quickest and the best way to build relationships and connections with audiences, with people? Right. So the umbrella of speaking is a big umbrella. I use that word to cover all kinds of different things. To me, it's just you're, you're showing your face and using your words at the same time, whether you're on Zoom or you're doing a podcast interview or you're on stage at a conference. Like to me, it's a really big umbrella. I kind of use stage in the same way. Like you belong on stage. It can be a little stage or a big stage, but you belong on stage. So when we're talking about this big umbrella, there is one essential ingredient. The rest of it can kind of fall away. But if you know the story to tell that will set up your point and connect with your audience, if you can show up with that story, it does so much of the work for you. It's such a, oh, did I freeze? <laughs> so the story is the thing. The story is the tool that creates the connection with your audience, that builds in your own life experience. So resonance, this concept that we are so desperate for from an audience perspective, it's like this person gets me, this person understands my life. And so this is the person I want to walk with. So the story we feel before we think as an audience member. So when I hear that story, I'm not being cynical about it. I haven't categorized it and already decided what I think about it before you even 
tell me about the thing. It's like the story keeps your brain open from a persuasive perspective. And so if, if, if you can show up out front in whatever context and you have your story in mind, it's going to get you so much farther, so much faster. I agree 100%. And you know what, as you were sharing that, it kind of reminded me of the first time I um, actually started doing public speaking myself, um, because I was at a stage in my business where I was really struggling. And, and like all businesses, when we start off with, we go through phases, you get to discover and learn more about yourself. And then I decided one day that well, basically I was journaling and in my journal, I specifically wrote something that I need to be bold. I need to do something that's scary and really putting myself out there. Uh, and it's just bold. And I thought, well, what's the one thing that scares me? And it's like, well, public speaking, I need to do this. So I started physically going out there and seeing where are the opportunities where I can start speaking, even if it's just sharing my story. And it was the most incredible adventure, almost in a sense. It was an adventure <laughs> because there was a lot of hurdles to get over. But the story part absolutely made so much sense without me even knowing it. Just by sharing it with people, people were immediately, you know, connecting and engaging with me and asking me questions. It's like, mm -hmm. that is such a great story. And then obviously you, you move into what you want to teach and things like that. But the story was always a thing that people remembered. And then even some years later, some of those people contacted me and said, I still remember your story. I still remember what you shared with me. They completely forgot what it is that I taught that day. Yeah. But the story was the thing that really yeah. kept them coming back time and time again. Yeah, the brain science around it is fascinating. And I know just enough to be dangerous about this, but what happens in the brain when we are telling a story is it, it it ignites several different parts of the brain at the same time you probably know about this stop me if you know no go on i, I, I know but i think the audience would love to hear about this <laughs> wonderful so as it's igniting different parts of the brain essentially it taps into their own experience as much as the, as they're watching you tell about your experience so because of course, like when you talk about a gymnasium from high school, well, they have their own association and images about what a gymnasium from high school looked like and feels like and sounds like. And so it's this beautiful co-creation that happens. And if we can tell our stories in a way that it ignites our audience's imagination, their own experiences, A, that's empathy, in action it's happening right there and b that's how they remember so the way you told that story henriette must have been in such a way that they uh imagined some things from their own life they connected emotionally to what you were talking about and now they will never forget that story because it has meaning for them yes it's One, so cool it's 100 so cool. <laughs> But you know what, um, I do agree with you because when I shared that story, it's exactly like you said, and, and even still looking back at it, I was like, I can't even remember what I shared, but I do know that it really resonated with a lot of people. And that also taught me a huge lesson, which is something I still use today is any kind of content I create, any, any speaking I do, whether it's just like here a conversation, whether it's a Facebook live, or Instagram live, it doesn't matter it always need to include stories. And that for me is the most important part. And still time and time again, people just say, I love that story or that just resonated with me. And I don't think I would be as far now with my business if it wasn't for stories. Yeah. And you know, the shift that we internally have to make is we have especially as women, I think we've, we've wanted to prioritize. Here's what I know right? Here's my expertise. Here's what I have developed. Here's my strategy. Here's my approach. Like here's the information I want to offer to you because that's valuable. We've earned that. That is our IP. Like this is, it's, it's really, really important, but we mistake handing that off to people and, and assuming that they have context around it, that they understand the significance and the meaning of it. It's like, if we don't front load 
all of our teaching, all of our know-how, all of our expertise with story, it's like it doesn't give it legs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help people understand the why. And so all of that effort goes to waste without the story. Yeah. 100%. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know a little bit from you with all your experience, obviously you're a speaking coach, so that comes without saying, but with all of your experience, how do you feel um, speaking has benefited your business really in a nutshell? Yeah. I love this question because we think about it oftentimes as a powerful business tool. And it is that for sure. Speaking is the way I've gotten, I've grown my own coaching business, right? Because somebody sees you speak and they are impressed with you and then want to follow up with you. It's helped grow my social. It's in all of the sort of traditional ways, speaking has been really great for my business. But the thing that I love about it is being able to be with other people to see the transformations happen in the room. Now I, you know, pandemic hit and speaking on stages wasn't really a thing anymore, but when I show up on this podcast interview, I'm speaking, this is a speaking opportunity and it is for all of your guests and any of your listeners, when you are out listener on a podcast interview, which I hope you're doing, that's a speaking opportunity and it's incredible networking. It's incredible connection, it's relationships. And so that to me has been the, the heart of this. Like I, I love people. I love what happens when we get together and exchange ideas, like this crazy brain thing that happens with the stories. That to me is the why. The business benefits, awesome. That's true and that's all there. But the transformations, the seeing the magic happen when we do this together, that to me is what it's really all about. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and I love hearing that because I know some people in the audience would also say, well, I'm a bit of an introvert. I can't go out there. It, it is just even hard for me to go and speak to one stranger. Now you want me to go and do speaking. <laughs> um, here's the thing. I used to be an introvert. Okay. This is something that can change. I don't think if you're an introvert once, yeah. you'll always be an introvert. I think this is something you can change. And like I said, I pushed myself to go out there and do the impossible, so to speak, mm -hmm. and really start speaking with people. And I just realized that I am very good at this. I can talk to people, which is why I've got the podcast because I can have these conversations. And if you asked me to do this, or if you told me 10 years ago that I would be doing this, I'd be like, that is wow. Crazy. I love that. So I do think anybody who really wants to get out there, become more visible and just show up more, be more visible yeah. because yeah. you actually, let's face it, you actually do enjoy it. <laughs> well, it's all learnable. So that to me is so important for everybody to understand the skills to do this. It's not like they're magical unicorns or not. And we tend to, uh, I think one of the benefits of the pandemic is it has democratized speaking yes. more. It's no longer just this thing that happens with really fancy people with, with um, a book and 10,000 plus followers and blah, blah, blah. Like we, we tend to put speakers on this pedestal. And I think the pandemic was like, guess what? Your big time keynote speakers are also on Zoom. <laughs> like everybody's, <laughs> everybody's doing the same thing. And it opened it up and it was like, yes, you can do this too. I invite yes. you in because it is all learnable. It is. There's no special qualifications. Like you can show up exactly like you are and learn to be more effective and more impactful, but there's nothing about you. Introvert, extrovert, like book, no book, beautiful you don't feel like you're beautiful, like that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in terms of audience impact. Yeah. Yeah. Just add but, some stories, just add yeah. stories and you'll be so surprised. It is a game changer. Now, I love, I love your story, Henriette. I love that you felt this thing inside you. Like, mm, I've got to, I feel a pull to do something bold and brave 
not that entrepreneurship isn't that because it is, <laughs> but you just even pushed it to the next level. You're like, yep, I am going to get out there. I'm going to do this thing that terrifies me. That's amazing. And it's transformative. You can't be the same person after you've proved yourself. Yeah. And, and you know what? I think a lot of this comes from confidence as well. And I've got this beautiful story talking about stories that I want to share with people here. You know how everybody's talking about this little diagram where it's your comfort zone. And then mm. here in the corner, you've got a little circle and this is your goal that you want to achieve. Yeah. And I kind of feel people have got the misconception that when you step out of this little circle, which is your comfort zone, now you're stepping into this vastness, this you know blackness mm. almost. And you've got to go into this unknown to reach your goal. Um, but I kind of recreated the story in a sense by saying that, remember, as soon as you take a little step out of that comfort zone, you immediately get a reward. And that reward is your confidence because all of a sudden you're going to go, well, the walls haven't caved in, lightning haven't struck, you know, I'm okay, I've done this. And immediately your reward is confidence. As soon as you get that confidence, that comfort zone around you expands, protecting you again. And then you take a lot of step, your confidence zone expands, yeah. another step, and you're protected the whole time until you reach that little goal. So you're not stepping out into the blackness and vastness forever. It is just yeah. the immediate moment you take a step and doing something crazy and scary obviously not life-threatening yeah. but like I did bold and scary I took that step my confidence grew and I was protected again with my comfort zone that it immediately expanded around me and then mm -hmm. you do a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and yes I'm still on the journey I'm still have so much to learn but with everything else oh my gosh like I said 10 years ago if you told me that this is what I would be doing I would be freaking out <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I spend time with some speakers who are prolific and doing this. They're making a lot of money from their speaking and they, they might say to you, I don't get nervous anymore. And I don't believe that because I've, I've, I've watched them. Actually, they do get nervous, but what has happened is they've totally changed their relationship with fear. Yeah. They have recognized, like you just said, that it's actually just a part of it. And on the other side of this nervous moment, right? That's in phys physiologically, the same thing as excitement. Like you're having an excitement moment for them. They're like, this is going to be, it's going to be fine. Yeah. I feel nervous or excited about it, but I know that I'm going to be fine. They trust themselves in that moment. The same thing is happening with somebody who is doing this for the first time, or they're just pushing themselves to show up on social more and to start playing with stories more that can feel really vulnerable and really nerve wracking. And what you're doing is teaching yourself. I'm okay. I can do this. I can get better at it, but I can do this. I'm not going to die. You're literally training your body. I'm not going to die. It's going to be okay. And eventually you will transform your relationship with fear. It won't be the thing that you think disqualifies you from the moment out front. Eventually what it is, is the thing that tells you you're doing something bold and brave and awesome. Yeah. And it will spurn you on instead of hold you back. Oh my goodness. I, I think this kind of segues beautifully into the other thing that I want to ask you. You talk about the four horsemen of visibility yeah. and you really touch up a little bit there on fear, which is I think one yes. of them. So Talk to us about the four horsemen of us of uh, visibility, yeah. as you said. I almost said vulnerability. <laughs> Not yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's that too, probably. But yeah, I mean, I this concept is a little dark, but uh, but it feels it feels right, right? These four horsemen that are just like out there in the night, and it feels like it can keep us from stepping out front and being visible with our audience. So when I say out front, I mean, anytime you're up in front of your audience on your Facebook lives on your Instagram lives and your Facebook group, whether you're or on stage or in podcasts or all the so many ways that we have to show up and be visible with our audience. And we tend to be held back in a few different ways. So I've categorized them uh, into fear, Okay. That's the first one. And we've been talking a lot about it. Like we think I'm afraid. And so that means I don't belong or I can't do this. Mm -hmm. It's too hard for me. I'm an introvert. I'm like, we have all these stories we tell ourselves and say, because I'm afraid 
I don't belong out front. I don't, I don't belong to, I shouldn't be visible. That's not true. It's always a part of it. Everybody feels fear. We just talked about that. The second horseman of visibility um, is, oh my gosh, I just totally like had a perfectionism. <laughs> I've, like, got, I've got it here. It's perfectionism. <laughs> thank you. I talk about this all the time. <laughs> this is perfect, actually, to me to talk about how perfectionism is the second one. And that's another total myth. Clearly, I never show up perfectly. That is not the goal. One of my mantras in my business with my speakers is our goal is connection, not perfection, because perfection actually kills connection. It is the thing that can create distance between you and your audience. But perfectionism, this real drive, and it's a very real drive for a lot of people, they never feel like they're ready yet. Mm -hmm. Got to perfect the script yet, or I don't quite have the right tech yet or whatever. I, I don't like how I look today. That holds a lot of people back so often. It's like today I was kind of like, well, I'm not really showing up super video ready, but this is where I'm at today. So this is, this is how I'm going to be today. This is it. And truthfully, when we can show up real, when we can be imperfect, because everybody's imperfect, if we can be our full human selves, instead of it risking our credibility, which we're afraid that it does, what it does is actually open up an avenue for relatability, yeah. connection. Um, and so if perfectionism is something that holds you back sometimes, my encouragement for you is to what I call hashtag show up anyway. We just, we press go even if you're not quite ready and you see it as the stepping stone, like you said, you're just taking a baby step out of your comfort zone and you slowly will start to prove to yourself that it'll be okay. And you can do this. Um, and then we have <laughs> judgment. <laughs> Thank you. This is only because I've got it printed out in front of me, okay? So Ladies and gentlemen, this is all here, even all the questions. So this is not You're perfectionism. <laughs> this is what I call preparation. That's all. <laughs> yeah. We, I, I thought I knew this stuff since, you know, <laughs> I just talk about it a million times a day. I'm just like, can't my brain? I don't know. I don't know what's happening. It's fine. It's fine. Yes. Ego, judgment. Judgment. Oh my gosh, the judgment, the fear, what will everybody think about me? It is real. Like I, I think I said at some point in our conversation, speaking can feel like we're in our adolescence again, yeah. feel like a seventh grader all of a sudden. And this judgment piece, the, the, the stories that go through our heads sound a lot like they did when we we're in seventh grade. What will they think about me? Like, what if I look stupid? What if I fall on my face? All of that is about judgment from other people. And so, um, it, and the truth is when we step out front, we are inviting in judgment from other people. We can't avoid that. And so the, the progression for people around judgment is getting more comfortable with other people's judgment and letting that go as much as we can. I have a sign in my office on the other side of my office. It says people already don't like you. <laughs> people will always judge. Story. That's the thing. Yeah. People will always judge. Even if they don't <laughs> say it out loud in the back of their heads, they will always judge. Right. It's just a human nature thing. Yeah. So me trying to protect this, this concept that everybody likes me, or that, um, you know, if I, if I do something wrong, then people won't like me. It's like, people already don't like you, Sally. So that's fine. <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to be. This is how life works. Uh, so we have fear. Um, we have perfectionism. We have ego and judgment because, because really judgment is truly all about our own sense of ego and protecting our ego. And ego is important. We need some ego to get out front, but not so much that we're unwilling to let people um, not like us. We got to let them not like, not like us. And then finally, the big one is imposter syndrome. Yeah. That fourth horseman, he just comes in at the last minute and makes you feel like you can't do this. 
that there's something in you that uh, makes you unworthy of this moment in some way. It one of these one of these things comes for all of us at different times, and it's not like we figure it out and then it goes away forever. It's really a a fluid relationship. Mm -hmm. Some days. I feel more imposter syndrome than other days. Some days I'm just like, yeah, I got my groove and I've got great mojo, but not always, right? And so um, it's really taking a moment if we can acknowledge how these mm -hmm. fears, these four horsemen really play a role in our own unwillingness to take risks. Yeah. Our yeah. own fear and the way it's keeping all of us to some degree from making our biggest dreams come true. Oh yeah. From the potential impact that exists within all of us. And that's up to us to manage. We can, and we can, we can decide and say, Nope, I'm, I'm going to do this anyway mm -hmm. and see what happens. You know what? It's so true because, um, just the other day I did an online workshop and just these four horsemen, I experienced all of them. Yeah. And I was sitting there getting ready for this workshop, literally counting down the minutes going, oh my gosh, 10 minutes to go. Oh my gosh, five minutes to go. And immediately fear crept in. What if people don't show up? Then I had perfectionism going, did I do my slides correctly? Is there anything that I forgot? And then yeah. I'm starting to question myself. So immediately, you know, the imposter syndrome is like, do you really think that this is going to work? Do you really yeah. think that you still got this nailed? And then at that moment, the judgment came in about what are people going to say? Are they actually going to enjoy this? Are they really going to take something from this? You know, what if, what if they just show up and then disappear and they just going to say, well, this is something that I did. You know, this is a waste of time. All of those things within a matter of a couple of minutes just started going through my head. Yeah. But it's yeah. true what you're saying. It's about how you manage it. Yes. And I thought at that moment, it's like, well, people did sign up. They are going to show up in five minutes. Yeah. I got to get through with this, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's no make or break. This is just going to yeah. happen. <laughs> it's really, it's live theater, you know, and, and especially entrepreneurs are like, listen, Sally, I, uh, I didn't get into the entrepreneurial space because I have a dream of being you know, uh, out front and on stage necessarily. Right. But that is part of how we do what we do. And so it's going to come for you at some yeah. point. And so to get there, like you said, it's, it's a part of it. So yeah. how do we manage, how do we move through so that we don't hold ourselves back? Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I don't think it will ever disappear and correct me if I'm wrong here. I don't think it's ever going to disappear all of these 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 fears the imposter syndrome judgment it won't go away but it will become easier to manage yes that's yep. the main thing so i think also if you want to start speaking using it as a strategy to become more visible for your business to build those relationships and connections then go out and do it literally just take those baby steps but also realize that you will be bombarded by these four horsemen all the yes. time you just got to learn to manage it and it will become easier. The easier it gets, the more enjoyable it will be. And the more you just start easing into it. Now I'm basic, basically talking from my own experience here, reflecting back on it, but you tell me if, if that's how you see it as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. The way to experiencing uh, joy, even in speaking, like I, that's my goal is I want people to enjoy the moments that they have out front because they can be so much fun to get there. You have to go through. So it's about practicing. It's truly just about putting in the time and learning the lessons that can only happen on our feet. Otherwise everything stays so theoretical. That's why when people are preparing for something and they're just focused on their slides and the script, I'm like, have you said it out loud yet? Have you stood up and put it in your body yet? Like that, you've got to do that because it lives differently in that way. The only way to get there is by standing up yeah, and trying and taking the risk and seeing what happens. So it, it's a simple thing, but I know it's not easy. 
My goodness. Well, I'm so glad you said that because at least for me personally, just because we're having this conversation, it feels like, okay, Hen, you're moving on the right track. You're okay. Yeah. Just keep going. <laughs> I mean, look at you. You did it. You have lived that experience totally. You got determined. Mm. You said, I'm going to do something about this. I see the potential impact. And personally, I want to challenge myself. And then you put in the work, you looked for opportunities and you showed up. You probably, it probably wasn't always awesome, which is not the point. It definitely right? wasn't. I can promise you there's quite a few where I'm still thinking about it and cringing going, never again. <laughs> and that's the, I mean, we carry on a lot of myths about, about this stuff. And one of them is that the professionals or the people who do this a lot, they never get nervous and they never screw up. It's like, no. nope, that's not true. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Sally, I can talk to you forever about this. I just feel this is such a fascinating topic, but equally for people who are just thinking like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to do this. And then there's this other part holding them back going, oh, are you sure? Just do it. Honestly, just try it out. You never know. You might just even surprise yourself. And I think the reason why I've got Sally here is as well, is not just to encourage you and to, to kind of motivate you to go out there and practice and try and do public speaking, or, or even if it's just a Facebook live, oh my gosh, start small if you have to. But equally at the same time, um, Sally has got an amazing challenge for you. It's a seven day visibility challenge really. Um, so Sally, why don't you tell us about this challenge? And I think everybody might be able to use this a little bit to step out of that oh, comfort zone. Totally, especially if this is something you're like, I know I need to do this, but I'm not quite sure how, and I need a little extra support. Just saying, go be visible, need a little bit more than that. Well, this is a seven day email challenge. It is very simple. You sign up and every day early in the morning, you get one email with one prompt for the day. So this prompt will take you less than 15 minutes to do. And all, you can choose the platform. You can choose the, the approach that you want to use. All I ask is that you show your face and you use your words at the same time. And if you're doing that, you're speaking, you're getting visible. Okay. And I'll give you the prompt and I'll give you some tips for how to do that. And then of course, I've got some support happening over in my Facebook group where you can come and ask questions. I do live trainings. So uh, it'll give you a kind of the baby step, step-by-step -step hand holding uh, along with the Facebook group too. And it's free. Oh my gosh. I just want to get y'all out of the nest. <laughs> And you know what, if you really, really want to make a big impact on it, if you really want to do this challenge, I will have the link below in the show notes so you can go and download the challenge and obviously sign up for it or not download, but sign up for the challenge. But here's another challenge for you. When you do it, why don't you just um, tag Sally into it? So obviously you could say, I'm doing this challenge and you're tagging Sally into it and she is going to cheer you on. And if you want to tag me into it, do it as well, because I will cheer you on. And I think that is the encouragement that will help you going. It's like, okay, I've done day one. Let me go on and do day two now. Yes. So, because we do need the encouragement. We do. We cannot do this alone. You need somebody behind you. I've been called a professional nudger before. That's what I do. <laughs> I will nudge. I will cheer you on. And I'd love to do that. that would be yes. Awesome. Honestly, just try it out. So Sally's uh, Instagram details will also be in the show notes. So make sure you go and follow her there. Her website details will also be there. So if you want to go and connect with her there, and maybe you've got a few more questions, by all means, DM her, connect with her on her website. But I challenge you to go and get Sally's challenge and then hashtag whatever you want to call it and then tag Sally into it as well. And I promise fact, you, you're going to get a let, load of support. Let me give you your hashtag. Okay. The hashtag is be visible. Okay. So you're just owning it. Hashtag be visible. And you can join at be moved.com forward slash be visible. So a lot of being visible. That's, That's perfect. <laughs> And if you didn't get that, don't worry, we'll put everything down below in the show notes so you can just go and join the challenge there. And yeah, let us know how you get on because yeah. like I said, you never know. You could just be really tapping into something that starts opening some amazing doors for you. And you might even go like, you know what? This is kind of fun. I really enjoy doing this. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then like Henriette, y'all like see pretty soon you're going to have your own podcast and then you'll be looking for keynote opportunities. And this, it's really the be visible challenge is the gateway drug. I feel like I, agree. Oh my goodness, Sally, thank you so much for being here with me. It was such a blast getting to talk to you. And thank you so much for sharing all of these amazing tips with the audience. I'm sure everybody's really eager now to go and download the Visible Challenge and then also just to go and try things out. So, oh my goodness, if this wasn't motivational enough, I don't know what could be. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I love having these conversations. I love empowering other entrepreneurial women to get out and play a bigger game. Like, and I know that that is what you're doing. So thanks for sharing your journey with me too. It's been great. Oh, bless you. It was an absolute blast. Thank you so much, Thank Shirley. You.